death of immortality. Flaubert, said to have claimed to despise the fame on which he staked his life, was still as snug in the consciousness of such contradictions as the comfortably off bourgeois who wrote, who wrote Madame Bovary. Faced by corrupt public opinion in the press, to which he reacted in the same way as Krauss, he thought he could rely on posterity, a bourgeoisie delivered from stupidity, to give due honor to its authentic critic. But he underestimated stupidity. The society he represents cannot speak its own name, and as it has become total, so, so stupidity, like intelligence, has become absolute. This attacks the vital centers of the intellectual. He can no longer pin his hopes, even on posterity, without sinking into conformity, even if this were only agreement with great minds. But as soon as he abandons such hopes, something blind and dogmatic comes into his work, prone to swing over to the other extreme of cynical capitulation. Fame resulting from objective processes in a market society, always fortuitous and often unsought, yet with an aura of justice and free choice, has been liquidated. It has become wholly a function of paid propagandists and is measured in terms of the investment risked, the investment risked by the bearer of a name or the interests behind him. The hired applauder, considered by someone as recent as Damir as an excrescence, has now attained respectability as an official agent of the cultural system. Writers bent on a career talk of their agents as naturally as their predecessors of their publishers, who even then had a foot in the advertising business. They assume personal responsibility for becoming famous, and thus, in a sense, for their afterlife, for what in totality organized society can hope to be remembered if it is not already known, and purchase from the lackeys of the trusts, as in former times, from the church, an expectation of immortality. But no blessing goes with it, just as voluntary memory and utter oblivion always belong together, organized fame and remembrance lead ineluctably to nothingness, the foretaste of which is perceptible in the hectic doings of all celebrities. The famous are not happy in their, in their lot. They become brand name commodities, alien and incomprehensible to themselves. And as their own living images, they are as if dead. In their pretentious concern for their areoles, these squander, or they squander the disinterested energy that is alone capable of permanence. The inhuman indifference and contempt instantaneously visited on the fallen idols of the culture industry reveals the truth about their fame, though without granting those disdainful of it any better hopes of posterity. The intellectual then, discovering his secret motive to be illegitimate, has no other remedy than to record his discovery.